What's up everybody? Welcome back to MK Motorsports. Today we're kicking off part three of the Beachworks fuel system upgrades on the 2004 Silverado. We're going to be running new electrical wiring and new fuel lines from the front of the truck to the back of the truck and to the surge tank. So stick around, we'll show you what we got. Our wiring we're going to be using today is going to be Beachworks dual fuel pump wiring kit. This is a great wiring harness. It's 10 gauge wiring front to back, has terminated ends and everything you need. The reason why these fuel pumps that we are running, the Detworks 400s, pull a lot of amps. Full tilt on this truck, approximately 20 pounds of boost maxed out, this thing will pull about 75 amps between all four fuel pumps. The fuel pump in the tank and the three pumps in the surge tank. Granted it's not going to be done that way for a long time, but just know there's 75 amps 75 to 80 amps that are going to be pulled from on this truck. Now, a lot of these trucks came with like a 105 amp alternator. This truck didn't come with electric fans to begin with, so I added electric fans. That being said, that's an additional draw on your uh, charging system. So I've upgraded my alternator in the past to uh, it's like a 140 amp alternator. I think it's like the D DG 44R or something along those lines. Bigger alternator, you can find it on like the Denali's and like the three quarter ton gas vehicles and Suburbans and stuff like that. Makes all the difference in the world. If you're running a 105 amp alternator with fans and these pumps, you are going to run into some electrical issues. Your truck is just not going to like it. Um, so keep that in mind when putting this in. I'm not even sure that the 140 amp alternator is going to be able to do what I need it to do, but I'll address that. Uh, when the time comes. As for fuel line, we're going to be working with the PTFE style line number six and number eight. Uh, I'm going to show you how to assemble these with the olive compression couplers. Um, I have a set of vice jaws that we can use to keep from marring up everything. But anyway, this is going to be critical as well because you need to get these right because if not, you're going to run into fuel leaks. Fuel leaks can be a disaster. So take your time this is going to be pretty meticulous pretty tedious but we're going to get through this so as you can see here's the factory wiring harness off the uh the truck i've changed this into a weather pack connector when i was running a different uh wiring harness kit but i've went ahead and done the legwork and, and labeled what what all the wires are ground power to the pump and the uh fuel pressure or not fuel pressure but the fuel level sender and the wiring we're going to be using is the dual universal pump kit from Deechworks. All this is good connectors, uh, 30 amp relays. Uh, once again, legwork's done. This is the one that's going to go to the in-tank fuel pump, and this is the one that's going to go to the surge tank. This wiring harness has an extra ground, which is great for the surge tank because there's your ground. And so we'll get this all wired up and everything. Um, we're going to trigger it off the factory fuel line or factory wiring harness to trigger the pumps to come on because, like I said, we've got two pumps coming. So that being said, we're going to get the truck outside. I got to do some test fitting on that to make sure how I want to run, which which fittings I want to come off my return and my feed, how they're going to come up through the bed, things like that. So stick around. So we went ahead and got the uh, the new harness put in, everything. Got it all soldered into the original main GM harness. Uh, this is my pump to power, and this is this big wire is going to be tied into that uh, harness. And this is the power from the ECM to trigger the fuel pump, and that's what's going to actually turn the relays on. Uh, I went ahead and got some fittings put in place. Uh, we're going to have to turn, and they're going to turn and run up through here when we get the hole in the bed cut. So that's kind of the gist of it. Like I said, I don't want to bore you with a bunch of details, but that's where we're at. So I have run into a few issues today. Um, one being that the return on the fuel tank uh, fuel pump sticks up too far and it actually hits a cross member underneath the bed. So we're going to have to notch that little cross member out. I don't know if it's something just with the crew cap silver autos that have this issue or if it's something within the rest of them. But also we ran into mounting the surge tank in the bed. Let me show you what we've got going on. Uh, 
so we're mounting it right there, right there, right there, and right there. Those are going to be our mounting holes. The uh, that plate that I was telling you about that it's underneath both of those, so we're going to have to kind of punch that out to get clearance and everything. But let me show you underneath where we're running into issues. So right there is where that fitting hits. So we're going to notch that fitting just a hair and um, the other stuff, there's the, the main mounting cross member and here's an additional support cross member which is what is hitting our fitting. So like I said, with this being a crew cab, it's all kind of bets are off. So anyway, we're going to get this punched out and figure out what to do with it and it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay, so it's day two and we've got the surge tank mounted, we've got the wiring run, we've got the bed back on the truck, we've got the uh, fuel lines and everything run through the bed of the truck, kind of where we want them, fix and start putting fittings together. But I'm going to talk about what filters we're going to run. The first filter we're going to run is going to be from the tank to the surge tank, and that's going to be the uh, Dietchworks FF110, uh, 110 millimeter length, and this is going to be a 100 micron filter. The other one we're going to run from the surge tank to the engine is going to be the FF160, once again, 160 millimeters across, and this is a 10 micron filter. So we're going to mount these in the bed of the truck, and they're going to look pretty sick when I get done with it. So let's get started putting these things in. So we're going to do a brief rundown on the way this filter is assembled. Here's your main barrel, just hollow tube and whatnot. These uh, mounting tabs, mounting legs, whatever you want to call them, they come out come off you can orient them four different ways or flip them over and you get you know about eight different ways you can actually adjust this thing I mean it's a round tube so I mean me for product placement boom so anyway I'll show you how to get this thing assembled um, right here is the end cap it has a number 10 to a number 8 o-ring boss or you can have a number 10 to number 10 kind of depending on whatever hose size you want it's adjustable but the main body has a 10 o-ring boss fitting also there is an o-ring and it fits into a machine groove that's in there and it needs to sit in there really nice i think because that's how your fuel filter is going to seal up and work properly and so this one may wrestle me just a bit just a bit i hope not Anyway, so the O-ring face part of this filter goes to the open port of your filter because fuel flows in around the outside, filters in through the middle, and comes out right there. So this face right here goes up against that O-ring, that O-ring, and that seals everything up. If that O-ring is out of place or it's not seated correctly, you're going to bypass the filter. Also, once this thing gets together, you could possibly cut and damage the O-ring, which makes the filter right here completely ineffective. Also, on the back side, this is magnetic to catch whatever uh, debris might come in that's metallic. Uh, pretty cool feature on that. I didn't find that out until I uh, got this stuck on my table. But anyway, I always try to get that in place right there. That way it holds that O-ring where it needs to go. Then on the other side, same fitting, no O-ring no this time, but it comes with a spring and that's what keeps everything kind of tight and tensed up. And then kind of depending on how you want your orientation is how you assemble this. Um, with some of the pre-planning, I've kind of decided this is the direction I want it to go. So 
springs in. One last check on the O-ring. It's in place. And then shove it all down. Give her a twist. And she's going back together. And basically, that is the rundown on these uh, fuel filters. And the, uh, the 110 that I also have is also set up the same way. Different micron rating on the filter, but the same construction, same end, same barrel, O-ring, everything like that's the same. So we're going to get these put in and we're going to go from there. your electrical lines or whatever kind of lines if you're running like two similar style lines together um, and one of them does one thing one of them does another thing do yourself a favor and you know put a piece of like red tracer tape on it or something like that especially if they're like loomed up like this because if you're both of your lines are just secured up and all you see is that you don't know which one does which I mean with mine I could look in there real closely because I ran a, a another wire through all that but you know when they're all secured boom okay I know which wire that is so you know that's a helpful little hint right there uh, another thing so when you're securing your fuel lines and electrical lines and everything like that if you run from the back of the truck to the front of the truck don't be like the the meme picture that was circulating around where like hey I just put my amp in and their power wires like routed zip tied to the drive shaft and stuff like that and you're just like start it up let's wait for the carnage make sure it's secure from any kind of heat sources moving parts anything like that i'm going to tuck this up there's a couple little ridges up on the actual chassis body of the truck that i'm going to kind of secure the fuel lines up to there is a main wiring harness that runs down the frame on this that i'm going to secure the uh, electrical lines to so that's how this is going to go i'll uh, get some video of it and uh show you kind of what all I've done once I get it wrapped up. So stick around, we'll get it done. All right, so we're gonna wrap up part three of the Detworks fuel injection system upgrades on the Silverado. What we did on this video, just kind of a recap, put the bed back on, we mounted the search tank, ran all of our fuel lines, all new fittings, ran our wiring harness from the back of the truck up to the uh, engine bay. So here's kind of what we did. So LKQ, junkyard run f-150 bed plug whatever it is it's on the back ford has them gm doesn't so utilize this cut holes in it ran my, my fuel lines and my wiring harnesses through there to get to the uh, from the tank up to the surge tank and back to the front of the engine so um, i'll show some a clip of this this is kind of the final end of how this ended up looking with the tank and the two fuel filters and everything like this. Now this didn't turn out the way I had it in my head. I had to change things up due to some, some constraints and things like that. So I will say this, 
this is not going to be something that you're going to do in a weekend. I mean, you can if you just really, really thrash on it. Um, this took a little bit longer than I wanted to. I ended up having to get some different parts. I ran into some uh, lack of lack of line. I had to get some new lines. So I had to order parts to get some parts brought in. But this could be done in a weekend if you really thrash on it. It took me a lot longer because I ended up doing uh, stuff on the fuel fuel rails and the fuel injectors. I kind of did this kind of these two videos that are coming up, I did them kind of all together, so I knew where I needed to terminate the ends and put the, the fittings on and things like that. So I ran into issues between the two of them. So we'll go underneath the truck. I'll show you. This is kind of where I ran the uh, wiring harnesses through, and luckily the ground eyelets that come in the uh, Detrox dual fuel pump kit uh, happened to land right there by a bolt uh, that went into the frame. So back that bolt nut off, back the bolt out, ground down the uh, frame a little bit, get to good bare metal, put them, put them on there, tighten them all down, um, zip tie the wiring harness to a pre-existing harness that runs underneath the truck. Fuel lines, I ran them up along the uh, body of the truck and just zip tie, or didn't zip tie them, I actually uh, used the clamps, clamped them into the, uh, the sheet metal, held them in place, that way the wiring harness and the fuel lines are not near anything hot, moving, anything like that. And then we routed them up into the engine bay. Uh, we have the return line coming up on at the corner, and then the main fuel feed line is coming up along the frame, and it turns up and goes into the uh, the rest of the, the intake manifold side of things that I built. The wiring harness we ran ran through the uh, control box, the power supply box and everything, ran that in. We bolted that into the uh, wiring harness for the alternator for the, where it gets power at, sends power back to the battery. Um, we also ran a, another activation wire with the stage 2 harness. Uh, what that's going to run is a hob switch, so um, routed that into that, that same hot spot. So once a uh, once the truck sees, you know, four pounds of boost, it brings on the other two pumps and gets, you know, completes all the fueling that you'll need for the truck. So um, that's kind of the, the gist of things on how that went. But all in all, this didn't quite go like I wanted it to. It usually doesn't because, like I said, what you put down on paper and in your head and everything truly ends up to be something completely different by this time it's all said and done. However, first time working with the PTFE style lines with the, the ferrules and the fittings and everything, little little different, a little tricky, uh, but for the most part, you know, I like the way it turned out. The, the hose is really nice, it looks really clean. What I will say is what I've done in the past on the conventional style fuel lines, you know, a Dremel tool with a good, good little blade on it will take it right off smooth and clean. That is not the case here. The wiring the, the stainless steel wrap that's around this thing, it's all there. It will destroy those little uh, Dremel tool blades in a heartbeat. I ended up using a like a four inch angle grinder with a really thin blade and that's what I used to cut them off and it cut them clean. And uh, you know, it didn't eat the blade up every half a cut. So that's kind of helpful up there. I wore out a set of wrenches. I wore out my uh, aluminum fitting jaw. I, built a lot of a lot of fittings between this uh, fuel surge tank install and then the intake so anyway uh, this was fun I enjoyed it this was probably the more complex part of this whole video because of all the planning that has to go into place but it's all done and anyway smash the like button leave me a comment give me a subscribe help me out here uh, I like to Say thanks to Detworks for all the fittings and all the uh, line and everything. And y'all guys have a good one. We'll catch you on the next upload. See ya.